Hi everybody and welcome to the update from the ANU Medical School from today, the 20th of September 2020. Yesterday was Are You OK Day. It's often not easy to ask friends or colleagues or family whether they're OK. And it might be even harder when you're not OK to answer that question honestly. To help a little bit with that, um, Are You OK has put up daily learning challenges that give some tips and tricks on how to open the dialogue how to ask the question, what to look out for, some, something on self-care and mindfulness and so on. If you fill out the form at the end of the week uh, to share your key learnings from this, you can go on to draw and win a prize. And I encourage you all to have a look at those short videos every day. It's a great way to keep in touch with others and find out whether they're okay. There is really nothing new on the COVID-19 travel restrictions. The travel restrictions from Victoria, of course, stay in place. Greater Sydney and Queensland are um, hotspots and anybody who's been to Sydney or has come from Queensland cannot do any placements for two weeks. If you have any symptoms, remember to go and see a GP or get tested. AIDA is offering two scholarships for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. There's first of all the 2020 Royal Flying Doctor Service um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health Scholarship, but also the 2020 New South Wales Royal Doctors Network. I encourage you all, um, if you're eligible to apply, they close very soon. We'll have more information on this in our newsletter next week. And here's a little bit on staff news. Meg Millen, who's the manager of the Royal Clinical School, has taken a three months transfer to help out with the Victorian COVID effort. Val Dimianenko, who was a clinical skills support officer, um, has finished her short term position. And Candy Riedel, who's been with us for quite a while, also as a clinical support officer, um, has taken up another job at Canberra Health Service. I'd like to thank them both for their help and for their support um, during the time that they were with us. And some news from the latest clinical um, promotion round. Um, uh, welcome and congratulations to Kylie Jung, who is a radiation oncologist, who is a clinical associate lecturer. Now, there have been some questions asked recently about mandatory staff training, um, because particularly during the COVID crisis, uh, emails have gone out um, urging staff to do some training. Just to be very clear, for all staff, particularly new staff, these are the mandatory training uh, sessions that everybody will have to do. They're the core cultural learning modules, ComCare, workplace health and safety modules, Code of Conduct and the Equal Opportunity Online module. Um, for all new staff from now on, they will also have to do the training module. They're all available on the ANU website under Pulse, and these are the only mandatory training modules. Of course, there are others that I would encourage you to do. An update from TELT. TELT is continuing to run modules on how to make uh, teaching online a bit easier for you. There is a shortcuts to video creation workshop running on the 6th of October from 1 to 2. TELT will also have regular drop-in sessions there every Tuesday from 1 to 2. And of course, you can contact the TELT team with any questions that you have um, under the email elearning.medicalschool at anu.edu.au. I'm sure they look forward to your questions and are happy to help you. And in the spotlight this week um, is the MedSoc or the Medical Student Society. The Medical Student Society is there for students, for their support, but also advocating for students. And they have played a huge role, particularly during the COVID crisis, um, working with us um, on this year's program. They also organise events, tutorials, um, and build relationships with other societies and look after students' welfare. There's more on our website. Um, please ha have a look. And congratulations are in order for some research funding. Um, Imogen Mitchell, Brett Schultz and Michael Chapman, together with colleagues from CAS, uh, namely Professor Di Slade and Ms. Liza Goncharov, um, have gotten $40,000 from the Canberra Health Private Practice. And uh, Neoman Sotasa um, got $18,000 from the Rural and Remote Medical Services Research Contract um, for his research. Congratulations to all. And I'd just like to remind you, particularly the students, um, to please nominate some teachers 
for teaching awards that will be given out at the end of the year. Historically, it's mainly students who have been nominating um, teachers, but of course, anybody can nominate. We have different categories where these awards are given out. That'd be the Teacher of the Year, Teaching Excellence in a Rural Setting, Teaching Excellence in Phase 1 or 2, in Clinical Supervision, in Tutoring, and in Innovation. The nominations will close end of this month. There's a link here on the video, um, but we will also make that available on our newsletter next week. Please nominate your teachers. They deserve it. And this week and next week, we will have our domestic admission interviews. They will be held for the first time online and have been organised by Associate Professor David Kramer and the fabulous admissions team. Um, I know that a lot of us are involved in this um, new way of interviewing prospective students, um, but we will also need help from academics to uh, look at the recordings and to grade the students. I wish David and the team good luck and I'm excited to see um, how that all goes. ANU is also looking for ideas from everybody uh, to help the ANU below zero strategy. They have developed um, seven themes around leadership and targets, energy and buildings, travel, behavioural changes, removing atmospheric greenhouse ga gas emissions, finance, investment and integrating the operations with research and teaching. Your feedback is sought either through the online um, idea capturing platform that's available through the ANU website or through workshops and these will be organised weekly to any of these themes over the next six weeks and I encourage you all to participate in this. In the media, um, this week we had um, Associate Professor Sanjaya Senanayaki again in ABC News Breakfast, Australian Financial Review, SBS World News, 7 News and Channel 10 and Professor Peter Collignon, the Australian Financial Review, ABC, news.com.au and The Age. There will be panel discussions held with Nectar and college deans, and these are particularly for early and mid-career researchers. The theme will be, how can ANU harness its strengths and uniqueness as the national university to thrive in a post-pandemic world? You need to register for this event, please. The STEM panel will be held on Tuesday, the 22nd of September, between 1 and 2. And uh, we have Russell Groen, the Dean of our college, Eleanor Hunting, the Dean of Kex, and Kieran Kirk, the Dean of College of Science, as panellists. There will also be an interactive virtual lunchtime workshop held uh, for women in STEM, um, particularly focusing on communicating effectively and with influence. This will be held next week on the 16th of September between 12 and 2 um, with Dr. Marin McKinnon from College of Science. Please also register for this event. And the Medical Deans of Australia and New Zealand will hold another medical education webinar. This will be on the 24th of September from 6 to 7.30. The topic will be medical leadership and managing change. Uh, you can pre-register for the webinar um, via the link that's up here on screen, but we will also make that available, of course, through our newsletter. So that was all from me for this fortnight. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you're all okay. Remember, look after yourself, look after your friends and colleagues. If you're unwell, please go get tested. And I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you on this channel in two weeks.